I'm Claire Moulton, the publisher at the Company of Biologists, and I'm going to talk briefly about transparent metrics. Obviously, a publisher can choose which metrics they want to be transparent about, and they can choose to, be, uh, to show metrics at the journal level, portfolio level, or across the whole organisation. Um, but I'm going to show um, three possible schemes that you might want to consider, and I've provided links to them here in case that's useful. The first model is the information power model, which has been endorsed by Plan S and focuses on editorial metrics as well as a price breakdown. The FAIR Open Access Alliance model, which has also been endorsed by Plan S and is about how the APC is used to fund different author services. And then finally, one from uh, the Society Publishers Coalition coming soon called Vital Statistics. So starting with the information power model, um, it's based around a data collection sheet that collects um, bibliographic metadata such as the ISSN of the journal, the APC, waiver policies, subscription prices. There's a large section on editorial metrics that I'll show an example for. And then there's the price breakdown. This is not as scary as it initially sounds and it is a percentage so that it doesn't actually show exact financial information. The end result is a machine readable table. There is an implementation guide provided along with recommendations, including legal advice so that publishers don't risk infringing comp competition law. So here's an example of that editorial metrics table. As I said, it's machine readable, so it doesn't look particularly pretty, but the table does include definitions of each of the measures and, um, and how you might want to go about reporting it. It includes standard measures such as acceptance rate, the number of reviews that an average article will receive, speed to publication and standard counter reports for usage. So those are probably the sorts of measures that you're recording on your journals anyway. In terms of the price breakdown, as I said, it's showing a percentage of the price breakdown, not actual financial details. Um, Plan S actually links to two examples, one from the company of biologists that I'm showing here. And you can see that the um, price has been broken down into different categories. There's journal community development, which will include um, policy development, editorial boards, and commissioning content. There's the cost for the submission to the first decision, that's the triaging step. There's the cost for peer review. Then there are the services from acceptance to publication, which will include copy editing, figure work, conversion to XML. There are services post-publication, including the handling of ethics issues. There's platform development, sales and marketing, and the all-important author and customer support. The second example that Plan S linked to is from F1000 Research. And um, in this case, they've divided their portfolio um, into categories. And so you can see the APC that you would pay and the different services and the breakdown of services that you would receive depending on which journal you submit to. So again, a very similar display um, using uh, different categories of spend, um, showing what sort of services an author receives. So I'm now going to move on to the FAIR Open Access Alliance model. This is very much based about the actual APC and the percentage breakdown and therefore the, the financial um, allocation uh, from the APC along different um, author services. So there are journal operations, including submission system and platform development. There's publication, including um, the peer review, copy editing and so on. There are the fees that you might pay to academic editors and so on. Uh, there's communication, including marketing, general uh, such as admin costs. And you can also indicate if the journal makes a surplus from the APC, that you can indicate that here. For example, it may be used to cross subsidize other journal titles. So the Fair Open Access Alliance linked to a number of examples. One of them is from Frontiers, and that uh, is reporting again very much in that table format. Um, and you can see that they've shown the APC um, and then the actual dollar um, equivalents in the different areas of activity for the journal. And again, they've shown different categories, so it might depend on which journal an author is submitting to. They also link to another example from Copernicus, where they've um, used the same scheme for breaking down the APC allocations, but they've again shown it in an infographic format, so you can see where the spend um, is, is allocated. And then finally, I said I'd talk about vital statistics. So this hasn't been published yet, um, but it came from a number of publishers who've used the, the previous two schemes to be more transparent about their metrics. And having received feedback from authors that they're delighted that we're being more transparent about our metrics, but there were certain author-facing uh, metrics that they would like to see that we hadn't included. So we've come up with an additional list. 
the items in bold are recommended and the others are optional. Um, and we're hoping that a number of members of the Society Publishers Coalition will show these metrics for their journals. It includes some standard measures such as the acceptance rate and speed to publication. But we've included here the two year impact factor, um, remembering DORA principles that that should be presented within a range of metrics. Um, and authors also wanted to know about certain policies, such as whether the journal accepts preprints, whether there's a mandatory publication fee, what's the open access status of the journal, and is there an open access fee? Um, and just a reminder on that final item um, that Plan S will also be requiring from transformative journals, open access um, versus non-open access metrics. So that's comparative metrics in the areas of usage, citations and out metrics. So uh, I'll just finish by reminding you that you can be transparent about whichever metrics you choose, but these might be helpful if you're looking for a scheme to follow or you're wanting Plan S compliance. Thank you very much. Goodbye.